here we go. Welcome back to the Moor Army podcast yet again for another episode. Hope you're all doing well there. Sorry for last Thursday's episode dropping uh, today before this episode does because, as you all know, I was away last Thursday. Um, but you can go and check it out. It is available on the, YouTube, on the YouTube channel. Also, all available platforms you get your podcasts in. Spotify, Apple Music, TuneIn Radio, the usual spots you can always get the Moor Army podcast on. But yes, hello. Welcome back to the Moor Army podcast for a yet another episode. How you all doing out there? Hope you're all keeping well out there since the last time I spoke to you. It's been a it's been an interesting few days, the last lot of days since the last time I spoke to you. Um I did mention to you obviously what we we're up to, well bits and pieces what we we're up to in our last week trip there. If you want to go check out the last podcast where Lewis actually came on to the podcast with me. Not that he was very interested in it, to be honest. I tried to convince him to do it, and he was kind of like, okay, Dad, I'll just do it for a bit anyway. We were sitting in a hotel room, I thought, come on in for a chat. But that's a little to listen to. But anyway, yes, hello, welcome back to Tuesday's episode. Bit of a situation. Um, number one, the last couple of days I haven't really been feeling great. Um, but I'm feeling a bit better now. I'm feeling a little bit better now, actually. Um been a bit run down, been a bit tired and stuff and not feeling great, but I'm alright now. I've had a couple of good nights sleep. I'm doing alright now, but we'll talk about that in just a wee second. But before we move any further in the podcast today, um, if you'd like to contact us here at the Burnley Podcast or anything at all to do with the program, you can do is by the following methods. You can contact us by the old social media, which is first of all Instagram, which I'm always on there all the time. Official Matthew Moore on Instagram. You can contact me on the old Facebook, which is Moore Army YouTube channel Facebook page. You can also uh, contact us. We're on thread. I'm on thread, but I've never haven't posted in months. Still haven't got around to using that, to be honest with you. I'm not on Twitter or X. If you want to try and contact me on that, I'm not on there. Um, you can contact us by email for the pro- the, the podcast, which is Moore Army Podcast at yahoo.com. Uh, also, um, if you're listening to us here on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe uh, on this video. I do appreciate it. Um, also, if you want to um, follow us and add us to your favourites, whether you're listening to us on Apple Music, Spotify, or tune in radio as well, I would appreciate that. And also, um, don't forget to check out our website for all our Moor Army podcasts, Moor Army YouTube channel merchandise, and much, much more. You can watch all the vlogs and all the videos and all on there, which is moorarmy.co.uk. And also, this podcast is uh, brought to you by Food Guru and I for all your uh, food reviews of all places here in Northern Ireland. Don't forget to follow them on TikTok and on, I think they're on Facebook as well, Food Guru and I for all your great food tips for local restaurants, local food outlets, and more. That's Food Guru and I, G U R U N I. Follow them on TikTok. Some good, interesting reviews. They're on there too. Anyway, guys, got some interesting things I want to talk to you about today. Um, I think people haven't talked about in quite a while, actually, in the podcast. Got some royal family news. I know you're thinking, hmm, okay, royal family again. Here we go, more bullshit. <laughs> um, just a few of your stories I want to bring up on the podcast today as well. I'm going to answer some of your questions as well, as I always like to do here on the podcast. And obviously tell you a few wee natter stories and whatnot, as usual. Anyway, what I've been up to since the last time I spoke to you, I'll tell you what, I had an absolute great time in Blackpool with Lewis. Well, apart from the incident after the football game, we talked about it on the podcast on Thursday, which was just released this morning there, uh, before I started recording this one. Um, We had a bit of an incident there, guys, if you haven't checked it out in the YouTube channel or the podcast, where um, last Thursday, or last Wednesday night, we were leaving a local derby game between Fleetwood and Blackpool in Fleetwood. And we got onto the tram, and unfortunately, Lewis and I's tram was attacked by a local gang who are not connected with Fleetwood or Blackpool Football Club at all. Um, From what I was reading this morning, there was five arrests still. Um, Speaking to a couple of fans and police officers on the night it happened. Uh, Guys, go and check it out on my YouTube channel. You'll see the videos. I videoed some stuff on on the tram just shortly, about minutes after it happened. We were just literally on the tram and all you heard was people shouting to us, get down, get down, and all the windows were smashed on the tram. People ended up with glass in their eyes, people ended up cut arms, cut hands. 
lucky enough we were okay. Um, but apparently this is a local gang that's going around between Fleetwood and Blackpool and every time there's a big game in the area, either area, they're causing problems and they're starting trouble. So here's hoping that the fleet, the police, sorry, in the Fleetwood, Blackpool, Lancaster area can get the end of this and fans can travel to big games from Fleetwood or Blackpool and get back home safe because it was not an experience, especially for my son. Didn't, exp- didn't fucking appreciate that whatsoever. So I've actually... Um, I had people contact me on social media about it all. Um, asked me, am we okay? Are we okay? Yes, we're fine. Um, no cuts or bruises or nothing from Lewis and I. People saw my, my, my YouTube video and they were all at me saying, you know, even people from the area, Fleetwood and Blackpool fans have been on me as well, saying they're fucking disgusted with it all. And I totally agree with that. Guys, it was an incident that I'll not, I'll not forget. But apart from that, Lewis and I had a great time in Blackpool. I'm going to be dropping more vlogs today. Um... The next one I'll be dropping today will be where I get new tattoos. Hmm, that's right. I got a new tat. Well, tattoos in Blackpool. You probably saw it on my social media, but I like I got new two new tattoos on my wrists um, of Brooke and Lewis's name. Now you're probably thinking mm. that's a bit cheesy, whatever. There's a meaning to it, guys. Um, I was going to get a, a one on my right wrist of my best friend who who passed away there a few years ago. I was going to get his initials and hit the, the date of his passing on my wrist. I will get that done somewhere else, but it changed my mind at the last minute and they ended up going for for Brooke and Lewis's name. And I've had people coming in saying that they like it. I've had people coming in saying that they, they think it looks shit. That's your opinion. I don't care. It's my, there's a meaning behind it. And I told the kids that. I says, no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, I've always got the two kids with me. So, because their, their names are on me now. And probably thinking, like, oh, it's dead cheesy and all stuff. Well, I don't give a shit. It's my choice, my tattoos. So, um, but people who've come in and said lovely comments, thank you very much for that. They appreciate it. Um, obviously, they get the occasional numpty comes in thinking they're funny, but probably wouldn't even dare sit in front of a chair, probably shit scared of a needle. <laughs> Tell you what you could do with that fucking needle. But anyway, yes, I'm going to be releasing that one today. I've got another one where we go around and Lewis goes back to the arcades. Guys, remember last summer? I was telling you about this in the podcast last summer. And obviously you saw the YouTube video of Lewis hitting the jackpot in, in the arcade with the Monopoly machines. He tries to go back and win those again. Uh, try to go back to them and lock me machine. He tries to win the jackpot again. Does he? Is he successful? you got to go and watch the vlog. So you do. So... Um, I managed to drag my ass to the dentist yesterday with the kids. I don't want to be a bit of vlogging at the dentist for an hour, upcoming video. Brooke and Lewis go back to the dentist. My God, do you know something? I was actually watching back a video of them the other, ni- other night there, knowing that they had to go to the dentist because, as I said, I wasn't feeling overly great the other day, or the last couple of days. And uh, I was watching them at the dentist before, and they were so tiny and small, and then looking at the dentist yesterday. Like, guys, Brooke's birthday's coming up here in, like, two, three weeks' time. And she's 18. And it's scurring the holy shit out of me. It's just 18 in like three weeks. Two weeks, maybe. Like this time, 18 years. I remember this like... I remember this eight, like 18 years ago. I remember sitting. like Because she was due to be born. Her due date was the 13th, but she came a week late. And I remember sitting, like, waiting. And waiting towards the end. And, and saying to their mum at the time, you know... This is fucking insane. Like, we're going to be parents here in a few days or whatever. Because, I mean, it's it, it, it still wasn't the 13th now. And I remember sitting there going, we're going to be parents in a few days. This is insane. And we're getting all the last preparations done. And now, 18 years later, she's a, she's a grown-ass woman. And it's scary, guys, because, you know, you look look at your babies. And the moment that they're small and cute and cuddly and they're all over you. And they say, I love you every five minutes. And they're, for the starter, obviously, first of all, they're slobbering all over you. And then they're peeing all over you and they're pooing all over you and then they're on their feet and then they're racking your home and then the next minute they're they're talking and they're walking and they're they're toddlers and then the next minute they become small young people when they go to primary school then they go to secondary school and then they finish and then the next minute bang they're an adult and you're like holy shit so yeah that's going to be an interesting couple of weeks coming up the brick's birthday it's going to be really interesting but anyway, yes, our trip to Blackpool there with Lewis and I had a great time. Uh, we met some people on the flight on the way over who knew us from YouTube. I actually ran into a great young man on on the flight over. He knew us from YouTube and stuff. 
he's actually a, a local banger lad, funny enough. I, I met him when he was sitting beside me on the flight on the way over. We had great chats. He was actually with his friend whose brother I used to be with, work with in football. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've known them. Great family, the Lucas family. They're great, great people. And had a great time chatting away to that young man on the flight on the way over. They were actually heading over to the Man United match, which Newcastle stuffed him 3 0, by the way, which Tony's obviously happy about because Tony's a Newcastle supporter and brother. Um, but no, it was great. Apart from the Ryanair flights, I mean, guys, can I just say something about Ryanair? They're the most awkward airline I've ever met in my life. You book your you book your flight, right? You go on like I you know guys, I fly with EGZ all the time. You book your flight, okay? You book two tickets. Say you get row seven A and B or E and F or whatever, and you're together beside each other with Ryanair, you have to pay extra money to sit beside each other. Like, what the fuck is that all about? Seriously, Ranner? And then all these extra charges and all that. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, on the way over, I was in, I was in seat 1C and Lewis was on 16B or something. Which is just like, what the fuck? He's a fucking child. You're booking your seat with your underage child. And they're making your child sit on their own. Oh, they're going to charge you. 18 quid to pick your fucking seat. Eh? There's an extra 36 quid on top of your flight. Now, lucky enough, I said to Lewis, well, we'll see what the situation is, who, what, what your seat is, if it's beside other kids or whatever. Happy days or whatever it is. Now, lucky enough, Lewis had a seat beside him that was empty and then it was a young girl, I'd probably say in her early 20s, and she was chatting away to Lewis and all, and she was lovely, so I ended up managing to sit up the front because if that was a different case, I'd have got Lewis to take the front seat um, because obviously, you know, he's around staff and all that, and it, 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 obviously a lot better and stuff, but better. But no, he was happy enough. But the point is, though, why did Ranner do that? Like, why? Even I booked a flight for mum and dad to go to Blackpool last year with Ranner. They had to sit separately from each other. Like, what the fuck is that all about? Why did Ranner do it? I, they never used to do that years ago. I flew with Ranner a couple of times years ago. I remember the last time I think I flew with him was when I was going to Scotland a long time ago. Was it Scotland? I can't even remember. I flew with them to Manchester a couple of times, obviously. But recent times, years and years ago, they never, they never ever, ever charged you extra for your seat. You know, and there's a lot of people I know who fly to Liverpool games, but they fly to Manchester because they kind of get a flight to Liverpool. And they use Ryanair and... I mean, a man who goes, <laughs> so funny because he flies with Ranner to Manchester and then he flies back home that night again if it's a Sunday game or a weekend game or whatever. But even people I know as well are all saying like Ranner is just shit and their seats are crap. Service is good now, they're nice people, but their prices for fucking drinks and all their stores in it. £3.80, guys, for a tin of Fanta. £3.80. You could go to Tesco. Or Asda and buy a full crate for three pound eighty. Three pound eighty for a tin of Fanta. And I just looked at the girl and went, three eighty? And I was like, what the fuck? Three pound eighty. Unbelievable. How the hell they can get away with it, I'll never know. I think it's 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 obviously cheaper on EasyJet, but still again, the extortion of prices. It's a crazy for how they can charge. And they they'll get away with it though, because they can. And that's why that, that that often I would normally buy stuff. Maybe if I need it, if I'm on an early flight in the morning home from Liverpool, or I'm on an early flight over, and maybe grab a coffee or something. But the prices in there, even in airports and all tour, are just absolutely fucking extortionate how they can get away with. It. So they are. But even so, Ryanair, I mean, charging you extra to sit in it in, in in your your allocated seat, which is just bullshit. I mean, me and Lewis are flying with them again in December. Or is it December? It is December. The Arsenal game we're going to on the 23rd of December. Two days before Christmas. And I was actually winding up Lewis. The other day, uh, well, I think it was when we were in the airport coming home. I says, Lewis, what are you going to do? Because Ryan and I have a history of being numpties. What are you going to do if they cancel the flight on Christmas Eve? What are we going to do? And he goes, we'll just get the train down to Liverpool. And we'll just wake up Christmas morning in Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, Lewis, you're a fucking numpty. But uh, speaking of Lewis, I tell you what, though, that young lad done some travelling this past week for a play to him. Um, we briefly talked about it on the podcast there of 
what was, was, was recorded last Thursday. Um, he left here, not obviously this is Tuesday morning, not last Sunday there, two days ago, the Sunday before. He left Sunday morning with Dad to travel to Liverpool for the Liverpool game, right? Then he spent two, two days or three days, two days there with Dad. He came home on the day of Halloween. He flew home Halloween. Then, it was the Tuesday, he came home at t- he was here. He arrived home about five or six o'clock at night. Came home, sat with the family for a few hours for Halloween because mum and dad came around. I put a bit of food and all on for us and stuff. And uh, I did a, a vlog which is out on the channel now, guys. But I didn't really do the whole big massive Halloween party. Um, Brooke and Lewis dressed up, or Brooke and Paul dressed up, mum dressed up, just a wee bit of a get together because dad and Lewis were a bit tired from the travel and stuff. Lewis then got up. <laughs> mum and dad left here about. 11 o'clock that night, Lewis went to bed, I went to bed, Lewis was only home for like what, six hours, in the bed, slept till uh, half past four, got out of bed, got showered, got changed, then dad came at half five in the morning to pick us up for the airport, back on a flight for half seven and back to Liverpool, or uh, back to Manchester, sorry, he flew to Manchester with me to go to Blackpool. Spent three days, two, three days there. Got up, got a flight on Friday night. Back home. We didn't get back home to like near midnight. Straight to bed. Up the next morning. Shard and changed and off to football on Saturday. Lewis has not stopped. And do you know something? Even when I was booking the trips and all, and, and Dad was booking the trip, I mean, you sure you want to do all this? And he was like, Dad, bring it on. I'm like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> you fucking agent. Absolute agent. Um, but here I'll tell you a story before I move on, uh, and there's some of the stuff I want to talk about in the podcast today as well. The weather we've had in Northern Ireland this past week or so has been absolutely fucking insane, hasn't it? Dad was taking us to the airport on Wednesday morning, and we got well, we almost we were caught briefly in small types of flooding up towards the airport, which is Antrim area, international airport. Normally, we fly to the the Belfast city airport, which is in the city itself. But we had to go to the international airport, and we were coming up just before we come. You come to the airport. There's a petrol station on the left hand side of the road, and the the water was rising really, really bad. The roads were getting really, really bad. The rain was fucking hammering down like mad. Dad was driving so slow, but we got to this petrol station, which is nearby the airport. And the water was running down the hill towards the wee roundabout beside it. And it was starting to really severely flood. And I remember, I remember Dad saying to me, oh Christ, look at that water. But even before we got there down the road, the water was really deep in the roads. But Dad's obviously driving a Jeep. He can get through it, no issues. But we got there. He got us. finally got us to the airport. It was fucking, the weather was horrible, horrible weather. So I said to Dad, when you're heading back, obviously you're not heading back just that way. You obviously cut off down onto the M2 on the way home. So obviously he'll try and avoid most of them, them roads again, which you went through on the way up to the airport. But the point was, I, I, we got to the airport ourselves, which ended up being a fucking nightmare because when we got there, they ended up moving us from one gate to the other because apparently there's a problem with the plane and everything else. So when we got to the other gate eventually, because our flight didn't take off to like 5 to 8, 8 o'clock, was supposed to take off at half 7. So before we boarded the flight, I thought, right, I'll pick up the phone, I'll give mum and dad a call, make sure they're fine, they get through all the rain and stuff like that, and make sure they're, see if they're back on the motorway on the way back home. So I rang dad, and I said, dad, are you, I rang mum's phone, mum answered answer the phone, and all I heard was in the background, dad shouting, and I goes, what the fuck's going on here, me, hello, what's going on? She says, do you remember the road we were heading down towards the petrol station before we turned off at the last roundabout before you go straight up to the airport? I says, yeah, one of the underground pipes has burst. And it's now completely flooded. Like you're talking like a few feet high of water. I says, you're fucking joking me. You only literally dropped me off at the airport like half an hour ago. Maybe more. Because I was about to sit in the wee terminal for a bit and wait. She says, nope, we're completely stuck. There's a girl actually in her, the waters up above her doors. And, well, up above, all above her like wheel height, up toward her bottom of her car. She's stuck in the water. The fire brigade are now on their way to try and suck the water out and try and uh, fix the burst pipe. And I was like, holy shit, that must have just literally happened like minutes or seconds after they dropped us off at the airport or drove past even because it was pretty bad when we got there. It took mum and dad three and a half hours to get home from the airport. 
Some fucking numpty apparently was diverting them off to the north side of a road. They ended up going round that road and ended up going back to, ended up back to where the fuck they started in the first place. And I was like, what the frig's going on here? And then the next minute, they managed to get some of it cleared. So Dad managed to get into the petrol station, but it was on down a wee bit from there where the major flood was. And Dad, Dad spoke to a wee guy there and he said, why the fuck did I get you down this road, go down that road? And he ended up going down that road. And when he got to the bottom of that road, there was an even bigger fucking flood. So Dad had to then turn his car around again and go up another way. And whatever. They ended up going the opposite direction and ended up going past Belfast Zoo, which is the oh, God knows many miles the opposite direction. Three and a half hours to get home. And to say they weren't happy was an understatement, and I don't blame them, because if it was me, I'd be fucking pissed as well. But, and saying that there about the, the weather here in Northern Ireland, I've been watching the news over, obviously, online, but some clips and uh, stuff that's been shared online. Places in Northern Ireland, like Newry, for example, completely flooded. All the ba- all the banks burst. All the re- I seen a I seen a fucking numpty. I swear to God, I don't know why he's doing it. He was out swimming in the water, the dirty water that was rising from the sewers. God knows what the hell he has on his skin now, or I mean, he's probably sick. Last I heard on Saturday, he was sick. <laughs> don't blame him for swimming. I seen a guy going down the road, which normally you just walk down that main street of Newry, and he was in a fucking like wee boat, rowing a boat. And I'm going, what the hell's going on down there? Dublin as well, the main river thing that runs through the centre of Dublin with all their lovely bridges and stuff. The water was uh, going up really, really high because the rain was coming down like crazy. But the weather in Northern Ireland has been crazy. Now, lucky enough, it's it's mostly gone now. I mean, I'm sitting here this morning recording this podcast, looking out the window, and I see a beautiful blue, blue sky out there and sunshine and everything else. So here's hoping that's the end of it now. But again... It's Northern Ireland. You know what the weather's like in the UK. It's fucking shit. It's November. No our luck. It'll fucking get to December and it'll be a blizzard or something like that because it's always away or normally things in Northern Ireland happens like it snows in June or July or something, you know. <laughs> it's absolutely bonkers. But the, some of the stories that I've had sent to me by you guys on the likes of Instagram and, and, and Facebook and emails and stuff has just been mind-boggling some of the rain stories like the floods in england scotland's been as usual scotland always seemed to get really get a bad with the snow and the rain and everything else but some of the stories we're reading over the last couple of days is just absolutely fucking insane and i could like just just looked at some of them and went holy balls like what is going on in this world but anyway yeah that was the the, the weather story for us getting to the airport um but apart now even when we got the blackpool it was chucking it down for a bit when we first got there, but well, oh, it was absolutely insane. But here, I have a funny story. I don't keep saying one of the subjects this whole podcast. I have another funny story for you for uh for the podcast today. As you all know, guys, every week I send the podcast every Thursday, Thursday's beer day. I like to have a beer, I like to chill out. Tony comes around sometimes, we'll have a drink and whatever else, and he goes home and that's it. Obviously every Thursday. So it was Thursday in, in, in the hotel. We stayed in the Blackpool Football Club Hotel, by the way, guys, inside the stadium. Go and check out the vlog from that from that or at place. Incredible. That hotel is amazing. The beds are comfy. It's right inside the stadium. I mean, actually in the stadium. When you're sitting in a restaurant, you're looking out at the stadium. You can go out and sit in the wee balcony thing inside the fucking stadium and have your dinner, which is awesome. So last Thursday, I was like, right, I'm going to have a few beers tonight. It's Thursday night. I may even have a wee sandburger while I'm here too as well. So I thought, screw it. I'm going down to the, the hotel bar and I'm going to get myself a wee drink. I'm going to get a bit of dinner. Um, so Lewis and I went down into the, into the thing. Now, our hotel room was right next to the restaurant, which was even better. So Lewis could go into the next room area near our, our, our room and... He ended up taking my laptop and went into my room, into the room and playing Fortnite while I was sitting in the bar having the wee drink and stuff like that there. So, I mean, he was there. But he came in with me at the start. We had a lovely dinner. Um, and then all of a sudden it was like, right, I need to have a few beers. Always doing a Thursday night. So, thing is, guys, on Thursday nights here in Northern Ireland, there's a radio station called U105. And I always seem to, I always text them in whenever me and Tony's having a few beers and get a few shout outs on the radio and stuff like that there. And I do it every single week. For a bit of crack, a bit of banter, and the staff have got to know who we are every Thursday night and stuff like that. So it's good fun. And I was sitting there and I thought, you know something, hang on, I'll get a wee shout out in the hotel room before I go out because I do it every Thursday night. So I did, and then we were all happy about it and stuff. 
<laughs> and then the next minute I was sitting in the, in the in the bar restaurant. A couple of families were there and stuff. And Lewis and I had our dinner. The dinner was incredible, by the way. Um. So then anyway, Lewis went back to the room and stuff. And I had a few pints and stuff. And there was only two couples left. And I had this boring radio station at the bar. And I turned around and says to the girl, by the way, shout out to the bar staff of the Blackpool Football Club. Amazing staff, great girls, so friendly, so pleasant. And they also give me free drink, but we'll say no more about that. Like, But anyway, <laughs> so we're sitting there and I, mean, I was having a few beers and whatever else. And I says to the girls, what type of stations that do you have on? And they went, ah, it's one of them local stations. They're, it's freaking crap. And I said, tell you what, what's it connected to? Is it a digital radio or whatever? And she says, um, I think it's one of the, the guy's phones. But it's running through the internet. And I went, give us his fucking phone out there and I'll have a look at it. Boom, 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 boom. Stuck on U105 here in Northern Ireland. And the tunes were on. And the staff loved it. They were like, this is great. Bit of 80s, bit of 90s, bit of modern music. You know, it's great. And even the, the couple that was sitting in the restaurant loved it. They were like, oh, it's better music. Yeah, great. So I thought, right, I'm going to wind these, I'm gonna wind this up here to fuck. Like, so what they actually done for me, this is a true story. They actually let me sit they actually let me take my drink into the stand and sit inside the football stadium where I was having it. Because it, was, it wasn't actually that cold that night. I was sitting there and I was having a wee beer. And I left the wee door, the wee balcony door open. Go and watch my vlog, guys. You'll see a wee balcony door open. A wee balcony door opens up under the stadium. That's where I was sitting, inside the stadium. So the bar, I was opening up playing the music and stuff. And I says, uh, watch this here. I'm going to text the station just to see what the crack is. And... Uh, <laughs> i tell you what I'll do. I've actually got a recording of it. So I'll do. So I'll play it for you now. I'll let you hear what they said on U105. Because I recorded it off my phone. And sent it to my brother back home. So listen to this here. This is what I got them to say on U105. Last Thursday night. In Blackpool. In Blackpool Stadium. Check this out. There you go. <laughs> That was me winding them up. And the staff couldn't get over it. They were over the moon. Oh, my God, you got us a shout-out at the radio station. We never get that here and all, blah, blah, blah. What a great night, guys. Seriously, what a fantastic night. And I was back in the room for about 11.30 because the bar shut and stuff. And Lewis was playing Fortnite. I come back to the room and, and, and was on the phone for a bit. And then I went to bed. I had a great night's sleep. I had a brilliant night. So a big shout out to the bar staff at Blackpool Football Club. Great staff. Oh, so funny. Guys, you ever get a chance to stay there, especially if you're a football fan, do it. It's worth it, trust me. It's worth every penny. It's a great hotel. And the staff are great. And the food's great. And here's the thing. Hey, I was talking to one of the bar staff behind her. No, I would say an older type girl. I'd probably say she was in her early 30s. And I was talking about her and stuff and I was saying to her, like, it's a bit weird tonight. No, and, you know... She says, do you come here often? Oh, yeah, we'll come in the summer normally with the kids. And I'm here for football last night, but I stayed an extra day. And normally I'm in the house back home with my brother and I'm having a few beers or whatever. And chatting away and she goes, uh, right, okay, what do you do? This is every Thursday. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll have a few beers. I have a couple of sandbookers, a few beers as well. It's like we need it for me to switch off from the world and a wee bit of a break from whatever else. And she's like, oh, okay. So when Lewis came back in for his dinner, we're sitting there having the dinner. And she came over to the table. And she handed me like two free or three free drinks, two pints, and two sorry, tell you a lie, a pint of John Smith's beer and two hamburgers. She goes, It's the end of the ball. She says, Are you are you have that? And I went, What? And she goes, Yeah, there you go. And I was like, Why? And she was like, Oh, then. one of the one of the guys works in the kitchen actually recognized Lewis and I from YouTube. So he came out and wanted the pictures and all taken and stuff. So we got our pictures and all taken with him and all. Really nice guy. And this, the other girls were coming over and saying, like, how does he know you? And they're like, oh, YouTube, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, really? Okay. So we're, there's a photograph on one of their Instagrams somewhere. I don't even think they've sent it to me yet with me with all the staff too as well. So it was a really good night, guys. I really enjoyed it. I had really good fun with the staff and they were so friendly. So a, a big shout out once again to the Banger Football Club staff. Uh, Banger Football Club, sorry, Blackpool Football Club. I said Banger, so it was a Banger the Weekender. <laughs> Blackpool Football Club. Uh, in England, great club, great people, so friendly, and I'm looking forward to getting back there for a match and an overnight in that hotel because they are really, really friendly. So anyway, uh, yes, I'm going to get into some 
of stories I want to talk about today because I'm rambling on here for nearly half an hour now. Oh yeah, and another thing as well, I was back at, as I just said, Banger there. I was at Banger's ground at the weekend there, back at my old stomping ground where I first started out in football. We played Banger at the weekend, finished one each. Uh, a lot of young, I promised guys, a lot of young ones that I would, I would give them a shout out in the podcast today. I met a lot of young ones there at the weekends. They wanted photographs and all taken. So anybody who came up to me and said hello, hi guys. It was really great meeting you all at the match on Saturday. Um, it was weird being back at Bangor's ground this Saturday, or last past Saturday, against the club. Because obviously I worked for Bangor for seven and a half years. And now I'm at the Welders. It was kind of strange, but it was a good experience. And people who come up and said hello, like even some of the, the staff of the club and all too as well, come up and were dead friendly and they made me feel very welcome. Um, thank you very much for that. But anybody who I met on Saturday and got photos and all taken with, thank you so much for coming up and saying hello. I do appreciate it. But anyway, let's get into some of the stories that I've got for you today. My goodness me. I've got quite a lot of stories today, actually. Well, not a lot, like, but I've got a few. Um, now, I know, guys, I, have, I, I did say that on this podcast, I won't talk about the war. Stuff going on in Israel at the minute. Because a lot of these are still contacting me about it, saying, what's your thoughts on this, and what's your thoughts on that, and that. And I says, look, I'm not going to get into it, because it, it, some of the things I've seen is horrible. But this thing I saw this morning really fucking pushed my button and pissed me off, because this is a ridiculous story to read, and I want to read it to you now, because this really pushed my buttons, and it really annoyed the hell out of me. The story was entitled this morning... Poppy selling veteran says he was punched and kicked when pro-Palestine supporters stormed the train station. A British Army veteran who was selling poppies at a train station said he was punched and kicked when pro-Palestine protesters staged a rally. Jim Henderson, who served with within the army in Northern Ireland, said he was attacked when trying to, to leave sorry leave the Edinburgh Waverley station. The seventy-eight-year-old man. Veteran decided to pack up when the crowds became too busy and then they started attacking him by kicking and punching him of what he was representing and what he was doing in the station. He felt that he was fear for his life. They also uh, stood on his feet and spat at his feet as well and also were giving him a lot of abuse and also he, they also threatened to take the money from the poppies as well, which is absolutely fucking disgusting. I'm sorry. I know I don't want to talk about the war on this podcast because, again, I try and keep it friendly. But when I see veterans like that being kicked and spat on by these morons, I'm sorry. That is ridiculous. Especially as a man in his late 70s going into his 80s. This is fucking disgusting and I want to talk about it this morning. I know I won't talk about the war, guys, but when I see things like that, you got to address it. it. Things like that should not be happening. The man's there trying to... Do, I mean, I was talking to a man yesterday... In Tesco's, who was selling p- poppies. Now, I know a lot of people out there don't agree with people wearing poppies. Now, I know you have all your different views and all of it, though. Again, I wear mine. And if you don't agree with me wearing one, that's fine. That's your choice. I ha- I don't judge you for what you believe in or whatever else. But again, I like supporting that cause. Because at the end of the day, I have family who were in the war. I have, fa- have great great grandparents or great relatives that were serving this country. And at the end of the day, people like that, a man there in, in England who was spat on, and like, why? It, it, I'm not getting into all these political crap because you could be talking about this for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into it now because it'll just end up making me fucking angry more and I'll probably end up getting kicked off the air for saying things. But anyway. The point is, a man like that should not be there. He's only there to try and help raise funds for veterans, which, in my opinion, there's a lot of veterans out there who are even living on the streets that shouldn't even be living on the fucking streets, who should be made some more of a top priority, like main British families to get new homes and stuff. But again, I'm not going to get into that whole thing because I want. I'll probably end up getting somebody writing me a message going, "Well, oh, you're being racist, and you're being this, and you're being that," and I can't be arsed listening to all that bullshit. I know this is an unleashed podcast, but again, especially when this this podcast is on YouTube, you will get some fucking moron who'll, who'll report it and get it cancelled and get the channel closed down, whatever else, because they don't agree with what I have to say. So, but when you see a veteran like that and being spat on and kicked on and punched 
And all he's doing is st standing there trying to raise money for veterans with the poppy appeal. People like that should be fucking ashamed of themselves and should be punished for that. Where's the police? Why aren't they in their job? So, there have been other instances that have happened the last few days about flags and stuff like that that a lot of you have been sending me messages about saying, well, what's your view on this thing about this guy holding an England flag and he's been asked to take it down because of the, the, the Palestine protest? No, I'm not getting into that, guys, but when I seen that thing about that wee mom with the poppies, that just really, just, oh... Oh, that just really made me cross. I met a lovely man yesterday who served. He was in his 80s. And I was speaking to him for about 10 minutes. And he was a lovely gentleman. And I made a donation to the, the poppy appeal. And I said to him, look, you don't have to, I've got a poppy in the house anyway, but you don't have to give me another one. Just take the donation. And we were chatting away for five, 10 minutes. Great man, respectful man, old school. Really a real class gentleman. Lovely man he was. I was talking away to him and he was such a nice man. But when people like that are out there trying to do something good for the cause and then you get these scumbags coming in fucking spitting them, people like that, 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 that should be, they should be dealt with. Now, I don't know why he's been, the, the people who don't have been arrested, probably not. But I just saw that story and I thought, right, I'm bringing that up. That, that's just horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Another interesting story for you. Listen to this here. I was reading this this morning. And I couldn't believe my eyes. A 101-year-old doctor is still practicing to this day. He said he has it's the secret to staying sharp as you age. A doctor has been sharing their, obviously sharing their, um, how he kept himself so fit and healthy. 101-year-old practitioner doctor explains the extra things he does to stay sharp as possible. He says he's been practicing medicine since 1947. Sure, as obviously he keeps himself working to this day. He says he just tries to keep himself as occupied as possible and eat right and obviously look after himself correctly. He says, my job requires me to review a number of medical uh, subjects and think uh, throughout problems. He says as well, staying in, in the best shape of mind at my age can be quite challenged at times. But I do try my best to keep myself fit, healthy, eat the correct foods and also try and keep my brain sharp as possible. His name is Dr. Tucker and he's, I think he is from the UK as far as I know from what I was reading this morning. But he, he, he's shared his recent stories and that's all over the news today so you'll be able to see if you have a look up. But a 101 year old doctor and he's still helping out with local surgeries and practicing and stuff. That's fucking insane. That is insane. I must share this story to my mum. <laughs> and, and the reason why I'm going to share it with her is because when she turned 60, she thought she was ready for the fucking knacker's yard. And I keep telling her all the time, Mum, seriously, you're 60. I know, but I'm old now and I'm done. And I'm ready for... She comes from a generation, guys. As soon as you turn 60, that's it. You're, you're an old age pensioner. You're, 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 not, you're ready for the knacker's yard. You're done. Like in 2023, 60-year-olds actually look like 40-year-olds. You know what I mean? Give me an example. Lisa Kudrow from Friends. I saw a recent photo of her the other day after watching some of the stuff about Matthew Perry's recent passing, which is just heartbreaking. Um, She's 61. And I'm looking at her going, you, what? She's what? 61? What? How? I you know it's like... Uh, and then I got my mum. She comes from a generation like, now nah, here's the thing. 35 years ago, say for example, a 60-year-old looked like a pensioner. And that's being honest. You look at a 60-year-old now and they look 40. It's true. And I'm going, hi. I go with my mum all the time. Mum, you're 63 or coming 63 this, next month. I know, but I'm old now, and I'm, I'm done now, and I'm going, no, you're fucking not, you're 62. Get up and live your life, you're young and fit and healthy, and, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm old now, and I, I, your dad's 64, coming in February, and all two, and we're old age pensioners now. I right, hold on, we have to get the forms here, and I'll send you into the freaking car home. But this man here sets an example, 101-year-old doctor. 101 Years old. Unbelievable. 
When I, was, I thought it was a wind up when I was reading the story this morning. I was like, there's no way he's 101. There's not a chance. There's not a mission. Nightmare. Anyway, moving on to the Norway story here this morning that I was reading. And some of you guys still contact me. It's about uh, cars on the road. You know, all this stuff about wheels going 20 miles an hour, certain parts of the UK going, changing, people talking about their, their, their cars and, you know, car insurance and stuff like that. And this popped up this morning, which I want to talk about for you drivers out there. Listen to this here. Drivers hit with massive 8,200 insurance. 8,200 pound uh, insurance quote for electric car as insurers have put up their prices. Now, before we get into this, I actually saw recently young drivers. Now, here's the thing. I'm, I could get into this all day about this and talk about it. You know, back when I was like 17, 18, you know, car insurance wasn't as expensive as what it is now. Young, I feel so sorry for young drivers say, 17, 18-year-old passing their driving test and their car insurance is through the fucking roof. What's how do they get away with it? Again, especially here in Northern Ireland, and you could blame it on a lot of different things, you know, the boy racers and people, the young ones are having a lot of crashes now compared to the older people, and that's why all the insurance is up through the roof because of these young drivers out there, excuse me. <clears throat> you could blame a lot of people for it. But now... Reading this story this morning, drivers are being hammered by car insurance prices with some people seeking quotes as high as £8,200 for popular electric cars like Teslas, for example. Eight grand? You could buy two fucking cars for that, maybe three or four, whatever. Eight grand for electric insurance. It's unbelievable. The average price of car insurance in the UK has gone up by a staggering 58%, which I've seen because... There's a girl I follow on TikTok from Northern Ireland and she just mentioned the other day about her daughter passing her driving test and four grand they quoted her 18 year old for car insurance. Four thousand pounds for car insurance for a year. How in the love of Pete can they get away with that? How? I understand they're young and I understand that more young ones have crashes now because they drive crazy with all their mates in the car and sh- show off and all that there. But what about those ones out there who don't do that and the ones out there who are genuine, you know, careful drivers and don't go crazy and, you know, four fucking grand for car insurance in Northern Ireland for a, an 18-year-old. That is Insane. Insane. The as I said, the average price has gone up by fifty eight percent in the last year. This represents a jump of three hundred and thirty eight pound for drivers, with the average cost of comprehensive insurance, uh, sorry, of a comprehensive insurance car policy hitting the, the price of nine hundred and twenty four quid. These are fears that prices will continue to rise, potentially putting the price of annual cover excess to one thousand pound, according to Confused dot com. Between July and September 2021, the average car insurance price was just £514, a decrease of almost £100 compared to the same time in 2020. Now, former Top Gear presenter, I'm sure you've probably heard of him, Rory Reid has come on to Twitter recently, apparently that's what it says in this report here, uh, to defend his frustration about this car insurance quote, saying it's absolutely ridiculous. He asks uh, his followers, how can you pay so much for an electric car? Why am I? Why is he being quoted as much as six to eight grand for a Tesla Model Y, which is absolutely ridiculous? Now Tesla cars, as you all know yourself, cost us an absolute fucking fortune. Lewis and I were actually in one last summer in a taxi in Blackpool, and I think the car was like sixty grand or something like that. It was like driving inside a spaceship. But the point is, guys, how can anybody charge that amount of money for a car insurance, which is just absolutely bonkers? Bonkers, so it is, to charge that amount. I don't know. I would hate to be a 17, 18 year old now person trying to drive their car. I'd probably going on their dad's insurance. It'd probably be a lot cheaper. It probably would be. But anyway, an Orby story I have about these people that I haven't spoken about for a while. Harry and Meghan are back in the news once again. Yes, the ginger twat and the drama queen. Yes, they're back in the news again. 
They've all, uh, it's come out in the news now, apparently they have not been invited to Charles's, King Charles's 75th birthday celebration. Would you invite him after his recent actions towards your family if you were King Charles? Not really. Um, also, Harry and Meghan have not been received any invitation to spend Christmas with the royal family as well. So no doubt you're going to have Meghan having a wee boohoo session now and maybe selling an RV story or going on a wee podcast somewhere and having a wee cry about it. But apparently they have not been invited to Charles's 75th birthday celebration. Now that's Harry's dad. His own dad has not even invited him to his own birthday. I've been saying this for months. He needs to kick her ass to the curb. He needs to kick her ass to the curb. So he does. She needs to go. Simple and plain as that. But again, Harry won't listen because he's madly in love with her and he loves her so much and she's so right and perfect. Even though Megan lives on a wee planet of her own where she thinks the world spins around her and everything's a drama and she tells all these wee tattle tales and she gets away with it. Like the time they were in New York recently she said she was getting chased by all these cars and she wasn't. Such a fucking drama queen. Talked about her for over the last year or so here on the podcast. And now, it's all rips. Everybody keeps saying that their marriage is on the rocks. And now he hasn't even invited his own dad's birthday party. Or celebration. And then I've been told they're not even welcome for Christmas. So there you go. I know what I would do if I was Harry. But again, that's my opinion. She, her ass would be kicked to the curb. And I would be returning home with a tail between my legs trying to get be with my family. Because at the end of the day, a lot of you guys always talk about sending me lovely messages about all this and make me laugh. You know, about Harry and Meghan and stuff. And I just laugh. So hard. But, anyway. Moving on. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring that up. The fact that they're not actually invited to the 75th birthday celebration. Which is funny. But again, this is the, this is the way they get on themselves. This is their, their, their behaviour. You want to get on like a jackass, it'll come back and bite you in the ass. It always does. So there you go. <laughs> right, let's get into some of your questions on the podcast today. Uh, thank you everybody for who's contacting me on all social media platforms and also on the email. Podcast at yahoo.com. I do appreciate it. So let's get into some of your questions. I'll go to the email first today, which is open... Nice and ready on my laptop. I'm very prepared today. Apart from guys, I did say I think I did say at the start of this podcast, my microphone broke, so I'm using a temporary mic at the minute. I don't know why it sounds better, why it sounds the same. I don't know. So let me know what you think of the sound on the, on the podcast today. Um, the microphone decided to shit its pants when I was in Blackpool, so I've had to go out and order another one. So it should be getting delivered actually today from Amazon. So it should be here. Mr. Amazon delivery driver is on its way. So here we go. But anyway, yes, guys, let's get into some of your questions here on the podcast today. Right, Murami Podcast at Yahoo.com. First one today is coming in from Dan. Dan sends me a message on the email today saying, Hey, Matthew, enjoy listening to your podcast every Tuesday and Thursday. Can I ask you a question? When are you going to start getting guests on your podcast? Don't get me wrong, I do love your podcast, but I'd love to see you bring in some guests to the program. What's your thoughts on this? Will it be happening very, very soon? I look forward to hearing your response if you do read my email out on the podcast. Okay, well, yes, I am eventually going to bring in guests. Don't know when, but I'm trying to work on a few at the minute, so I am. I'm also trying to uh, you know, get more people involved in the podcast, trying to get more subjects, because I'm going to actually do a redraft of the podcast here, because I did record an announcement for the whole Moore Army setup which I'm going to hopefully get dropped before the end of the week. I did put it on hold. I didn't mention it in the last podcast. I'm going to put it on hold till I get back home in Northern Ireland, which I'm now back. So I'm going to release that this week. It's going to explain to you more about the podcast change and, and obviously the YouTube channel and all that there. So stay tuned, Dan. It's coming. Believe me, it's coming. Trust me. Let's move on to the next one. Thank, thank you for your email, by the way. As always, thank you. Uh, move on to the next one. Saying... It's now, I have to look here and see where is this one from. This is one's from Emma. Emma on the email says, Hi, Matthew. Love all your videos on YouTube and also love your weekly podcast as well. It does make me laugh the way you rant and rave. I absolutely love it. It sees a different side of you every single week compared to the YouTube channel. But I wanted to know what your big announcement's going to be because you keep saying now for over a week what your big announcement's going to be. Keep up the great work, Emma. 
Well, stay tuned, Emma. It's coming, trust me. Um, some big changes are going to be coming to the Mirror Army. Um, let's just say it's going to be something that's going to be obviously expand us more and get us out there more. So just stay tuned. Hold on to your hat. It's coming. <laughs> don't blow away like that bad wind here in Northern Ireland, trust me. Please don't. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for your ma and do you obviously thank you for watching the videos as well. It obviously means a lot. So let's get into our email here. Let's have a look here and see now where are we? Gee whiz, I love opening these emails every week. I actually love it so do. Right, here's one here from Robert. Robert says, Hi Matthew, question for the podcast this week. What is your all time favourite game show? Flip. That's a that's a good one. God, you know something? I have a few. I've grew up around watching so many shows growing up as a kid. The likes of Bullseye here in the UK, Wheel of Fortune, uh, Strike It Lucky, Bruce Forsyth, Cart. I used to watch all them programs back in the 80s and 90s. I used to, well, would you even really call it a game show? I don't think you would. Gladiators. I used to watch that when I was a kid. I used to love The Krypton Factor here in the UK because it was a program where they used to do those obstacle courses. Uh, what was the other one I used to watch with Annika Rice? What was it called? Treasure Hunt. I used to watch that when I was a kid. But I've had to point a finger on one probably be Bullseye because Bullseye was so much fun. We used to watch it on a Sunday night. You know, all around, the, all around the telly on a Sunday night, you got your bath before you went to bed for school on Monday morning. You sat around the, the fire on a Sunday night and you all watched Bullseye. Or some people I know called Bullshit. <laughs> I used to love it. It was great. You know, Jim Bowen and... Billy and all, oh my God, you go back and watch some of the old episodes, you see, this is what you could have won. Um, and, you know, you had to say you throw a dart at the board and it goes, in one, you have won a Betamax video player. In two, you have won a stereo, which is half the size of your wall in your room. You've won a 21-inch color, color portable television. And then you see people, like, who the nearest sea from them is like three or 400 miles away. You've just won a speedboat. Yeah, so just things like that. Funny times, but uh, yeah, good times. I look back at some of them episodes sometimes when they're on like, Sky TV and stuff. You look at it and you go, oh my God, like what the hell? And some of the outfits that they used to wear too. Women with the perms and the shell suits and men with their big mustaches and all. And they're, oh God, back in the day, like it was so, so good. Like it was such a great program. Actually, Peter, Craig, Peter K cracks a joke on it. Some th on one of his live shows, but it's, I still remember this day where he was sitting there and he was like, uh, Jim Bowen used to be standing there and he's like, you've, you've walked away today with £35 and we'll count that out to you during the commercial break. What is it, two peas? <laughs> Just be things like that. So funny. Great memories. So that I would say probably Bullseye and all them ones that are ready to as well. There could be loads more like, but i always always used to stand out for me so so funny great memories from back in the day as a kid too as well but thanks for your question as always i appreciate it i'll do one more on the email before i move into the old social media let's have a look here and say we have one here from Stephen on the email says hi matthew you said in one of your recent youtube videos you've been recording on a gopro can i ask you what your experience with your gopro has been like so far i'm thinking about getting one as i like to cycle my bike but i'd love to have a gopro on me why I'm cycling around. Oh, God, he's one of these cyclists. Oh, Jesus, Moses. Please tell me you're not wearing cycling shorts with a GoPro on your head and you're running around trying to get everybody to stop the whole road for you, are you? God, I hope you're one of these ones that does, like, you no know, bike mountain biking where you're up in the hills and all and showing great views and stuff instead of these ones driving down the road with a wee GoPro in front of your head with your tight cycling shorts on and you read The Guardian and you drink champagne, no? Oh, please tell me you're not one of them. Anyway, he goes in this. Was even money winding you up, by the way. Uh, it says, "Ah, oh, there you go. Sorry, my apologies. My apologies." Reading the rest of his email, I also like to do a bit of mountain biking around the coast and also in mountains, and I'd like to get some shots for my GoPro. What's your thoughts on your GoPro? Is it highly recommended? I apologize. You're not one of them. We lefties that run around with a wee tight cycling shorts on with the GoPro on their head, go around thinking the whole road belongs to them. I've seen some of them videos from London and it just makes your teeth itch. Um, the GoPro that I have is the GoPro Hero 11. Now, I've just recently brought it to 12, which isn't much of a difference, to be quite honest with you. But yes, it is a good camera. It shoots 5K, 4K, 1080, 720, all in great frame rates. The quality is amazing. So yes, if you're looking for a GoPro Hero 11 or GoPro Hero 12, and that's the GoPro you need to go with. Trust me, 
they are very very good so they are so uh if you're out up doing your mountain biking up the mountains and stuff like that there send me a couple of clips across and let me see them but please don't drive around the streets of london with your tight tight cycling shorts on with your wee helmet and your gopro on running around going oh i'm better than you this road belongs to me oh i've seen them before and they're even here in Northern Ireland too. And a friend of mine has had a run in with a couple of them over the years. And they just think the road's their own. And it's just an absolute nightmare. So at least you're a mountain biker. Send me some of your clips and I'll be able to look at it. So anyway, let's get on to social media. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just them ones with the GoPros sometimes. They drive me nuts. Anyway, uh, moving on. Let's get into the Instagram ones here. Right? Let's have a look here on the Instagram. Right, I have one here from where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Let's have a look here and see. God, there's a bloody many message requests. I'm oh, gee whiz. Right, Lucinda. Is it Lucinda or Lucia? Lucinda? Lucia? I, I, I hope I've pronounced your name right. I, I apologise if I haven't. Is it Lucinda or Lu- Lucia? I'll have to read that again. I have no glasses on. I can't even see. Right, what does it say here? Hi, Matthew. How you doing? I saw your video you posted on YouTube a few days ago of you visiting the One Pound Burger place in Blackpool. Can I just say, I visited that wee shop last summer with my husband and my two kids and the gentleman who you met was absolutely amazing. He was so friendly, so welcoming and he also gave us a free burger for being so nice. Can I say, the video that he done for you was absolutely amazing and I'm looking forward to getting back to Blackpool very, very soon with my family. Okay, well, Lucia, Lucinda, I'm sorry. Yes, we met him last week. He is such a nice guy. And he done a wee video, wee short video for my uh, YouTube channel. And for my, I don't even think I've posted it on TikTok. I don't even think I have. I posted it on the Facebook fan page. Such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. Uh, I was telling them, obviously, we were YouTubers as well, and we watched him, and we watched the other guy from Blackpool, does all the walking around back Blackpool and tells you stories about it and all. And uh, he goes, oh, okay, hi, big's your channel. And I said, I've been going for nearly eight years now, and I showed him some of the videos, the really big videos that went mental and viral. He was like, oh, my God, like, your, your Barcelona video is like six million views. And I'm going, yeah. And then all these other ones, like 100,000, 50,000, like, oh, my God, where you? Hi, hi. And uh, it was like, it's just one of those things. And he goes, and I says, can I, I mean, would you do this wee video for, for uh, your, what do you call it? Our channel? He's like, yes, mate, no problem. So I will give him a wee shout as well on our videos too as well. He was such a nice guy. So he was so pleasant, so nice. And he done one for Lewis's channel too. <laughs> He's such a nice guy. But yes, the bur- and Lewis tried the burger, by the way. And Lewis loved the burger. A pound burger, guys, in Blackpool. A pound burger. I saw the day before we went and met him, we were actually outside his place, walked past it, and we saw the queue out. The queue was down the fucking street for a pound burger. Like, unbelievable. But then when we were standing talking away to him and stuff, this Scottish family came in, and they were all excited because they knew who he was. And I mean, this guy's been on the likes of... The Rate My Takeaway YouTube channel. He's been on television. He's had celebrities at his place and all too as well. Such a nice guy. And uh, when he met us and all, he was really nice. And I commented on one of his videos on YouTube and just said to him, look, listen, it was great meeting you today. You know, we'll, we'll see you in the summer again, hopefully, blah, blah. And he wrote, he wrote a personal message back to me. Thank you, me and all, for being there at the shop and all. And he thanked me for being there and all. Really cool guy. But yes, I agree with you. When you were there with your family last summer, I'm sure he was lovely with you because he was lovely with us. And I'm looking forward to getting back there again in the summer again. Hopefully, with well, it might just be me and Lewis this year because Brooke doesn't want to go this year. This is the joys of having an 18 year old teenager. But thank you for your your message. I do appreciate it. I'll do one more Instagram and then I'll move on to Facebook before I rock and roll down the road here, guys, because I'm going to get this uh, podcast out today. Right, let's have another one here and see. I've one here from Alex. Alex. On Instagram says, Hi Matthew, I've recently seen your video where you recently attended an Adrian Edmondson show in Liverpool. I attended the one, sorry, excuse me, how to speak. I attended the one in Manchester the night before and briefly met Aid outside. I know you said yourself you've been looking forward to meeting Aid for over 20 years 
And I must say, for all the 30 seconds that I met him, he was such a nice guy. He stopped for pictures, spoke to everyone before he went inside the venue. It was a great show. I watched your video from you reviewing the, the show itself. I also got him after the show where he signed my book for me as well. Really? Lucky bastard. <laughs> but I must say, my experience with Aidan Manchester was absolutely first class. Such a great comedy genius. A legend of the comedy scene in the UK. And I hope to see him in the future again at other gigs and shows. Okay. Well, thank you for your message. And uh, thanks for rubbing it in. I'm only kidding. Uh, yes, I, I, I was a, it was a great show. My experience with him was fantastic. Sitting right at the front, just watching one of your, your people who you watched, the Chai growing up. And he's just standing there right in front of you. Again, I, I still want to get that picture with him. Um, I'm, I'm doing anything to get a picture with him. Literally, I would do anything to get a picture with him. He's just a nice guy. And people met him just before, you know, they, he went into the venue. I just literally missed him by about 30 seconds. So hopefully, fingers crossed in the future, I will get to meet this guy. It's, it's on my bucket list to do because he, he just makes me laugh. Guys, he's one of them people. I mean, give me an example. The last week or so since Matthew Perry passed away, people have been coming out on social media and saying the Friends is one of them programs where people go to say they're having a bad day or they're going through a breakup or a passing of someone or someone's passed away in their family or just a genuine shitty time in their life or they're having whatever time of it, they go watch Friends and Friends makes them feel better. When I was a kid growing up and I was going through all my bullying stuff and all my R stuff that I was going through as a young boy, Adrian Edmondson, Rick Mill were some of the people that I used to go and watch to try and take my mind off the world by say, say I was going through, like when my marriage first ended or I was going through a, a, a bad patch when I was a teenager or I was going through really bad bullying at the time or something was going on. They were some of the people that I used to go and watch to make me switch off from the world and help me laugh, whether it would be the Dangerous Brothers they used to do, the Young Ones, Bottom, you know, Filthy Rich and Cat Flap, even some of the programmes that they've done, like, for example, Rick Mel's done multiple TV shows and movies. Adrian Edmondson's the same. They were even in the likes of Black Adder and, and programmes like that. You know, I watch those things, and I that, that helps me take my mind off from all the bad times that I'm going through at that specific time. And... When I met Rick back, as I told the story before, I met Rick back in 2006. Spent a bit of time with him. Lovely guy. We took pictures. He signed my books. He'd done everything for me. I had a great moment with him for 35, 40 minutes, maybe longer than that. I can't even remember. Chatting away to him, asking him questions about his life and about his family and about his career and about everything else. You know, I, I, I wanted that moment with Ed as well. Just, to, just Even for 30 seconds to a minute, just to talk to him and just say, here, Thank you for, for, for helping me get through bad times. Thank you for doing this here. I know obviously you probably hear this all the time, but just obviously he was one of them people that used to help me get through my bad times. And I would, I would just love to get a Because I've got a picture of me and Aid in the house, or me and Rick in the house, and I want to get a picture of me and Aid. And just to say that I've met the both of them, and I was so happy that I've met both of them. So, But I've, I'm still reading his book at the minute, and his book's incredible. So it is. It's really, really good. And he read, he read a few extracts from the book on the show, but when you read his actual book, and I'm actually going to, I'm going to download the audio of it as well, because it's an incredible book. The stuff that that man went through, which I didn't even know about as a child, this is incredible, unbelievable. But yeah, I hope you had a good time at the show, and I hope you enjoy and treasure your copy of that book, because I would give anything for him to sign my book. So would anything. But I hope you had a great time in Manchester. Um, because he, he actually did crack a joke at the start of the night in Manchester, or he, or Liverpool, sorry. He said it was in Manchester last night. Ooh, oh, I thought I was going to get that. <laughs> but thanks for your message, I appreciate it. Right, let's get on to some of your Facebook messages before we go here, guys, uh, and head down the road here for another day here. Right, Facebook. Do, 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 do. More on my YouTube channel on Facebook, by the way, guys. Please drop a like on the page, I would appreciate it, and share it with everybody. It does uh, mean a lot to me. Right, I've one here from Harold. Harold on Facebook. Harold, I haven't heard that name. Last time I heard the name Harold was Harold Bishop on Neighbours. Excuse me. Um, Harold says to me, Hi Matthew, enjoy watching all your content on YouTube. Can I ask you, is there anywhere in the world that if you had a chance to travel to tomorrow, you would travel to? Thanks for reading my message. Have a great day. Hard. Well, okay. I think I've mentioned this before. I want to go back to New York. I want to go to um, 
back to Florida again. I want to go to just different. I want to go to well. I'm hoping I'm planning to go into Germany next year with Lewis. Germany is a country I've wanted to go back. Fran. I want to go back to France and do it properly. Um, but yeah, like the the wee French villages and stuff like that there, and visit all the wee small bits and bobs across. I've always wanted to travel across France. That's always been a goal of mine. Um, but Germany is a nice place I'd like to go to as well. Um. I don't know, I'd love to go back to the States and just travel in the States. I've always wanted to go to Australia and see what Australia's like. Um, that's another place I mean going to someday. Long flight though, but be worth it. But yeah, it's pretty much a hard. I'd just like to go to different places like that, to revisit and obviously do it properly next time. So thanks for message. I'll do one more and then I'm heading down the road. Facebook, let's have a look. Right, I've one here from Winston. God, I'm getting these random names today. Winston and Hard. Winston says, Hi Matthew, I've recently started doing a podcast myself on collecting items. Okay, I've sent you a link here for the Spotify channel. I want to see if you could check it out and give me your view on it. I'm a bit of a collector and I'm a bit of a buyer and seller and trader myself. And then he put in brackets like Del Boy. Okay. My podcast, my friend and I just sit and talk for 35 to 40 minutes each week about different things that we like to collect and obviously talk about different items that has been discovered around the world and obviously things that we find and do ourselves. Please, if you don't mind, could you please check out our podcast and see what you think. Kind regards. Love your podcast as well. Uh, P.S. Keep up the good work. Okay, certainly. Um, I'll have a look at that on Spotify. Thank you for the link. Um, collecting things and things like that. I do see quite a lot of people like that. I actually know a guy who... I haven't seen him for a long time. He used to be involved in local football here. He was a bit of a buyer and trader and he used to see him at the auctions all the time and he used to be buying and selling stuff all the time and whatnot. So I think he's still doing that, to be honest with you. I mean, you're, sometimes you can actually make a good living out of that, depending on obviously how you do it. And if it's just a passion, then that's fine. But there's people out there who actually make a living out of that. You know? So, um, yes, I'll certainly, I'll, I'll click on the wee link here after the podcast and I'll have a wee listen to see what you think and I'll, I'll drop you a wee review on it. And uh, I'll have a listen to you and your friend talk about different things like that. Maybe it's on our podcast I can listen to you every week. You never know. But thank you for your message. I appreciate it. Right, guys, that's going to bring us to the end of this episode of the Moor Army podcast for another episode. Back on Thursday, guys, with more news, stories, etc., etc., etc. Jackass of the Week's back on Thursday. So if you have any suggestions for that there, please drop me a message as on the usual sources. Um, don't forget to check out Food Guru and I guys as well um, on TikTok. Uh, they are a reviewing place for great food outlets here in Northern Ireland, whether it be restaurants, bars, also food establishments where you can get all your great foods all across Northern Ireland. So it's Food Guru, G R U G U R U N I on TikTok. Don't forget to go and check them out as well. Uh, great supporters here of the Murami podcast. Don't forget if you want to check out our all our social media feeds instagram official matthew Moore, the website guys yes that's the only thing i forgot to say to you uh i've been speaking to the guy yesterday the Moore army uh christmas merchandise should be dropping before the end of this week on the website so it's moorarmy.co.uk for all your christmas merchandise podcast merchandise Moore army uh youtube channel merchandise Lewis's merchandise is on there as well. His famous Orwa t-shirt, which is selling really, really well, actually. His Orwa t-shirt. So uh, you want to go and check that out? You can. But we're back on Thursday, guys. So get in touch with us as always. And uh, if you're listening to us here on Spotify, Apple Music, and also on TuneIn, please add us to your favourites. If you're listening to it here on YouTube, please drop a like on the video and also hit subscribe below. I would appreciate it. And spread the news more of the Murami podcast, guys, as you always do. Right, until Thursday, enjoy your Tuesday, enjoy your Wednesday. Don't forget to go back and check out last week's podcast from Lewis and I on Blackpool and all the other great videos that someone will be dropping today, actually, where I get my new tattoos. You'll see me getting tattooed, guys. That's right, and more. So please go and check out the Mirror Army YouTube channel as well. appreciate it. So until Thursday, I will see you back here for another episode of the Mirror Army podcast. Till then, stay safe, guys, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks for listening.